Hello dear chess friends, you're welcome to the series dedicated to good and bad minor pieces. In this first lesson of the series, we are focused on bad bishops. This position is taken from the game Rubinstein against Canal. So here we can see that white has a choice between queen takes c3 and pawn takes c3. And at the first glance, it looks like pawn takes c3 will be a natural continuation because in this case white simply improves the situation in the center makes pawn d4 no longer isolated one and simply has chances to grab the space with the help of further movement of those pawns let's say c4 there is also a possibility to come up with a breakthrough in the center maybe a bit later with the help of d5 and so on but in this case black simply completes the development after b6 then the bishop c8 goes inevitably to b7 and after c5 sooner or later this bishop becomes very active and very annoying piece so queen takes c3 which happened in the game appears much stronger continuation because in this case white still has an isolated pawn on d4 it is kind of drawback in white's position but white achieves much more because we can see that queen c3 controls c6 pawn which makes b6 not possible for black to move moreover this c file is open so even if black protects c6 to prepare b6 move and then bishop b7 white will have a chance to play rook to c1 it happened in a game so let's see queen d6 preparing b6 but then rook goes to c1 still controlling c6 so if black plays b6 then pawn c6 simply drops which means that black doesn't really have a possibility to activate bishop c8. So this makes this bishop completely passive and very bad piece. So pay attention to this typical layout. Majority of black's pawns are placed on light squares, which means that bishop c8 is self-limited. It is the first and the most common situation for a bad bishop, so to be limited with own pawns. So let's have a look how white improved his position. After bishop d7, knight goes to e5, very good outpost for the knight. Now white has this great monster knight in the center. Rook d8, another rook goes to d1, protecting d4 in advance. And bishop goes to c8, so black has nothing better. So it's not possible to improve position of the bishop. It's not possible to play b6. It will be very hard to play f6 in this situation because uh, whenever black does that e6 becomes uh, deadly weak so it is also not possible to do to try to play e5 for instance and activate the bishop so this bishop is very bad for a long time now a3 bishop f6 queen goes to e3 queen goes to e7 and now h4 very important moment so white starts uh, preparing activity on the king side and it is very easy to do because white has a maneuver of the bishop from b3 to c2. Then we will see that h7 will become a target. It is possible to create a tandem. So queen sooner or later will get to e4 to attack h7. This will provoke, for example, move like g6 in black's camp. And it is a self-weakening. At the same time, it creates a great hook for white to attack. So pawn goes to h5 attacking g6 and so on and let's have a look on what happened in next several moves rook d6 h5 rook d8 rook c3 and white simply has no limits in activating the pieces to maximum so bishop to c2 then queen to e4 at some point it is uh, even possible to play something like g4 and then rook from c3 will join the attack somehow so black will be forced to play g6 and so on and the main feature of this position is that white has an extra minor piece in this attack so materially position is balanced but bishop c8 takes no part in the game that's a big problem so it is completely out of play it has no chance to influence the position it is passive for the rest of the game this makes white's position simply overwhelming Let's have a look at another example. This position rose in the game between Sikorsky and Shagalovich. We can see that black has a positional drawback with the pawn structure on the king side because pawns are doubled and pawn h7 is also a potential weakness. But 
White has no so many pieces on the board, so it will be not so easy for him to exploit these drawbacks. As for other pieces, uh, everything looks fine for Black at the moment, but White makes a series of correct moves, and this leads to very bad consequences for Black's bishop, which is quite surprising because at the moment it looks very active. So look, it occupies this long diagonal a8 h1. It has no limits on the way, so black has a theoretic chance to create a tandem on this diagonal and exert some pressure on white's position. It is also possible to do something like king to h8 and rook to g8 to help the rook to join this attack against g2. So everything looks just okay for black. But white plays f5, so the first move that forces black to play e5 because white has a positional threat of taking on e6, after which all black pawns will be very vulnerable and uh, at the same time white will have a better access to f6 pawn for example so f file will be opened and uh, white will attack this pawn with the help of the rook and the queen there are a lot of uh, tactical tricks of course because even if black protects the pawn on e6 there is a threat of queen to g4 check just attacking the king and pawn e6 at the same time Taking on f5 looks simply awful. In this case, you can see that white has no problems with attacking black's weaknesses on the king side. So black decided to play e5, which looks normal because in the previous example we saw that uh, it is a better strategy to have pawns on the squares of another color than your bishop. So in the previous example, almost all black's pawns were placed on light squares, making light squared bishop very passive here black has a light squared bishop again and uh, looks like it's better to place pawns in dark squares so black has no problems with playing e5 at this stage but queen g4 check king goes to h8 now e4 and after queen d7 or any other move inevitably d3 and now we can see what happened so white just placed all the pawns on light squares which looks at first glance not so great because white also has a light squared bishop so it looks like this limits the activity of the own bishop in fact we can see that this placement is quite different so uh, bishop is okay so bishop c4 is active white's pawns just uh, make no limits for this bishop and it simply attacks f7 and some squares in black's camp as for black's light squared bishop it became completely passive now because white placed the pawns the way to create, let's call it a prison, right? So it's not possible to improve position of this bishop now. It is very passive itself because it attacks pawn e4, which is perfectly protected by the pawn d3. So it's not possible to win the pawn e4. It's not possible to change the situation with the help of other pawns. Everything is simply blockaded. It's not possible to sacrifice something because black simply has no enough material resources to compensate this sacrifice. And this means the bishop is bad forever. So whenever it goes somewhere, it has no possibilities to be improved. So let's imagine the maneuver of bishop c8, for example, and then bishop to d7 to attack b5. This attack will be not enough. So b5 is perfectly protected. It's not possible to break through. So f5 also controls e6 square, preventing black's bishop from uh, being exchanged for white's light square bishop c4. On pawn f7 limits the bishop, so it's not possible, for example, to get to e8 and then to be activated through diagonal e8 h5. So f7 just stops that, which means it is really a prison for the bishop and white's pieces placement. And what is more importantly, pawn placement is perfect. To limit the activity of the bishop and to make it passive forever. So after several moves, queen d4, king h1, queen e3, queen h5, white starts trying to exploit some weaknesses in black's camp, king g7 and h4. This creates h2 square for a king and prepares rook to f3 followed by rook to g3. So black is literally forced to play queen h6, only chance to avoid a direct checkmate in attack or something like that. So queen takes h6, king takes h6, and rook goes to a1. So yeah, black managed to simplify a position and get rid of queens on the board, but this uh, makes its position not easier, because still, the difference in the power of bishops is quite noticeable. 
This bishop b7 has no chances, has no objects of attack, has no perspectives, and white manages to activate the rook to maximum, so rook goes inevitably to a7, and then white will have uh, great chances to win the game. Further simplification might be also not enough for black, because black has some vulnerabilities in his camp. Moreover, white has a chance to force a good exchange at the best moment. For example, when the king is already activated and um, can join the central play or something like that, white will have this interesting resource. Bishop to d5, forcing uh, bishop takes d5, then pawn takes d5, and white achieves this great passed pawn on d5, supported by the king from e4, and then white will have a chance to break through with the help of d6, king d5, and so on. There are also a lot of different layouts. For example, rook to a6 is an interesting try for white just to sacrifice an exchange, but to achieve this great a6 pawn supported by the bishop. But the main feature is, of course, the difference between the bishops. So bishop c4 is great, despite almost all white's pawns are placed in light squares, and black's light squared bishop is very bad, despite almost all the pawns are placed in dark squares. So as you can see, it is not a big difference between own pawns or opponent's pawns in the sense of uh, limiting the bishop. So if the bishop is limited like this, or like in the previous example with own pawns, in both cases it is a very bad piece. So let's have a look on the next example. This position is taken from the game between Yusupov and Miles. And white starts with a very wise decision. So white plays knight to b6, attacking the rook and the bishop, forcing the rook to move. And after that, knight takes c8, queen takes c8, and rook to b6. So what happened in the position? White simply exchanged black's light squared bishop, which could be potentially quite useful for black. So it was possible to play, for example, bishop to f5, and to fight for central square to try to exchange white's very powerful central bishop e4, and so on. And after this exchange, we can see a difference. So bishop on e4 is just powerful piece, very good one, because this bishop has a chance to attack along the diagonal b1, h7. So we can see here, black has uh, h7, g6 pawns, quite a vulnerable pair of pawns, because white has a typical idea of challenging them with the help of h4, h5, which inevitably makes the diagonal b1, h7 vulnerable or completely open, so this bishop will become a key piece in attack against opponent's king. At the same time, this bishop has a chance to join the attack against a6 pawn, so at almost any moment, uh, white will have a chance to play bishop to d3 and just attack directly this weakness on a6. What happens to black's bishop? So black's bishop f8 is limited with own pawns, as we can see. e5, d6, c5, those pawns just limit the activity of this bishop a lot. But what is more importantly, this bishop at first glance has a chance to be improved, right? So there are different ideas, uh, for example, bishop e7 followed by bishop d8 attacking a5 pawn. And another possibility is simply to put the bishop on h6, a free diagonal to occupy, and here this bishop has no limits. When the bishop gets to d8, well, white simply protects a5 pawn and uh, black can't use this bishop somehow additionally so okay a5 is protected what is next nothing so on that diagonal bishop has no other perspectives as for h6 uh, square for the bishop yes this diagonal is free there are no limits the bishop will be at first glance very active on this diagonal but the problem is that there are no objects of attack for this bishop here so even if bishop gets to h6 well you can see that there are no pawns or pieces on this diagonal, there are no squares that are possible to occupy and to use for black's favor somehow. So wherever bishop goes, here are no perspectives, no possibilities to use this bishop. So this makes this bishop completely useless. And it is the third typical situation of having a bad bishop. Bishop simply has no objects of attack, a useless bishop. So this makes white's position completely winning. What is important for white is just to be careful preventing all blacks tries to activate the bishop or activate other pieces.
and gradually prepare the play on the king side with the help of h4, h5. Let's have a look how white converted this position. So after bishop e7, g3, kicking the rook away and at the same time preparing programmatic h4, rook goes away, king goes to g2, covering h3 square, preventing black's queen h3, queen goes to d7, a tricky move, uh, at first glance looks like black simply uh, blunders a6 pawn, in fact after rook takes a6, rook a6, queen a6, black has some chances because black just counterattacks after queen a4. So we can see the bishop is now attacked and uh, at the same time a5 becomes a target, so black is ready to attack this pawn with the help of bishop d8 or something like that. There is also a possibility to play something like queen b3, attacking c3 or c4 first, just fixing this weakness and then trying to attack it and so on. So black has some chances here. So instead of taking the pawn, white simply played rook to a1. Very good move, uh, protecting a5 pawn because black is ready to play bishop d8 at some point and covering a4 square preventing black's queen a4. Very good prophylactic move. So rook goes to a8 protecting a6, now it was a threat just to take the pawn, so rook goes to a8, and now h4. h4 is the start of attack on the king side. Bishop d8, rook b1, rook b7, black tries to simplify a position, but this doesn't really help. Rook takes, queen takes, and just h5. Making light squares on the king side and all over the board, so completely weakened, which makes bishop e4 very powerful. g5, queen g4, queen e7 h6, fixing the weakness on h7 and making g5 pawn very vulnerable, so now black has no chance to play h6 and support this pawn. Rook b8, bishop goes to d3 now, attacking a6, and now in the game uh, black sacrificed the pawn on a6 and uh, gradually lost the position. The point here is that if rook comes back to a8 to protect a6, white just plays something like queen f5, improving position of the queen even more. And after, let's say, rook to a7, rook goes to b1, and white inevitably invades black's camp from, let's say, b8 square or b7 square. So it depends. We can see there are a lot of different squares that white can occupy with heavy pieces. White has a access to that squares, and black simply has too many weaknesses here. Bishop on d8, as you can see, is just out of play and uh, plays a very passive role, just protecting some squares and pawns and can't really influence the position. White's bishop on d3 is just a monster, attacking all important squares and pieces in black's position. So this example concludes the first lesson in which we discuss three typical situations that make the bishop bad. So the first was limited with own pawns, the second limited with opponent's pawns and the third situation is the situation from this last example when the bishop is simply useless so it has no objects to attack it can be improved somehow but no objects to attack and this makes this bishop completely useless thanks for your attention see you next lessons